today we're going to be working on some division problems, and they are multi-step problems, which means it's not just going to take one step to do them. You may have two steps, you may have three steps, depends on what it's asking of you. Be prepared and follow along with this first page because you're going to have to write a lot of it on the next page. See what changes? All right, so let's read the problem that it's asking of us this morning. Lucia and her dad will prepare corn for a community picnic. There are three bags of corn. Each bag holds 32 ears of corn. When the corn is cooked, they want to divide the corn equally among eight serving plates. How many ears of corn should they put on each of eight serving plates? Get your highlighter out, please. Say the question with me. How many ears of corn should they put on each of eight serving plates? So I am finding out the number of what that will go on each plate. What's it asking of us in that question we just highlighted? Ears of corn. So I need to find the number of ears of corn that will go on each plate. Now who can tell me what numbers I'm going to use from my problem to help me figure it out? Brad? Okay, three bags. Anything else? Okay, that bag will hold 32 ears of corn, or each one will. And then the eight serving plates. So look at how many numbers you have in your problem. Is that typically going to tell us we have more than one step? Yes. All right, look at the next box. What information do I need to use? So how many bags? How many bags? Look up here at the things we just circled, guys. Three bags. So whatever you circle can easily be brought down here to the box. So be three bags with how many ears in each bag? 32. The total ears are divided equally into how many groups? Eight. So they're kind of giving you a hint here of how you're going to figure this problem out already. Because it has three bags with 32 ears in each bag. So hopefully that's giving you some type of idea of what is my problem going to look like. Then it says that total ears are divided equally into eight groups. Did it just give you that step? Yeah, it sure did. So now we want to know how we're going to use the information. We are going to make a bar model for each step to visualize the information. Then I will blank to find the total. So what am I going to do to find a total? How do I find totals? Add. Multiplying them. And it has it right here. Three bags with 32 ears in each bag would be a multiplication. So you're going to multiply to find the total. And then what are we going to do to find the number for each plate? Divide. So you're first going to multiply to find a total. Once you have that total, then you're going to divide it by the eight plates that they're asking you to put them on. Everybody good so far? Okay, so now over here on the right, you're going to see how they solve the problem. You're going to draw bar models to visualize the information that's given to you, and then decide how to find how many ears of corn should go on a plate. So take a look at what they did first. They're modeling your multiplication problem to find the total number of ears of corn. So if you look over here at the information that we use, three bags with 32 ears. So how many boxes did they make? Three for the three bags. What did they put in those boxes? The 32 ears that were in each bag. Does everybody see how the model matches? They're looking for what down here? Which is going to be my? When we multiply, we don't get a quotient. The product, which is going to be my total number of ears of corn, correct? Okay, so that's the first step that we need to take care of. So, 32 times the 3. So write it over here if you can't do that in your pen. 3 times 2 is? 6. 6. 3 times 3. So you're going to put 
96 down here for the total number of ears of corn. Yeah, we know you can add 32, 32, and 32, but I need you to know that you can do 32 times 3 because we're working on multiplication and division right now, yes? So yeah, you can use addition to help you, but I need you to know that it's going to be 32 times 3, okay? All right, then I'm going to model and divide and find out how many ears of corn should go on each plate. So I want you to look at the model that they have drawn. Your 96 that you just came up with is where? On the bottom again. So how many boxes are here? The eight for what? What's the eight standing for? The serving plates that we're going to put them on. Yes? Okay, so how am I going to be dividing that? What am I going to do to find what goes in those little boxes? Amen? Okay, so you're going to write out here to the side, 96 divided by the 8. How many times does 8 go into 9? Once, and 1 times 8? Eight. 8 is 8, so I bring it down. 9 minus 8, and I have to bring down my 6. 8 into 16, 2. What's 8 times 2? 16. So it comes out evenly with a 0, right? So what's going to go on each plate? So you need to write 12 in each one of the boxes, representing the 8 plates of 12. So how many different models did we have to draw? Well, they drew them for us this time, but you're going to get to draw them next time. How many different models do we have? Two. Two. So you're going to have at least two steps in your problems from now on on this page and the next. Okay, let's answer a couple questions down here. How many years of corn should go on each plate? Twelve years of corn, which is what you just found. All right, the next question asks you, how can you check your answer? Think to yourself, please raise your hand if you want to tell me. How could I check it, Mackenzie? Eight times twelve. Okay. Is that the only thing I'm going to have to do? Since there were two steps, I'm probably going to have to take two steps to check it, right? So I would agree with you. You're going to take the 8 times the 12, and then what do you still have to do? Come back up here. What did we use up here? Well, when I have the 8 times the 12, I'm going to get what? The 96. So what number up here from this portion do I need to use to also get back to that? Am I going to use the 32 or the 3? The 3. So you're going to multiply again, because you divided the last time, right? So in order to check the division, you're going to multiply. Is everybody with me? And then to check your multiplication, you're going to divide. So you're doing what? What do we call that? The inverse operation. So when you're checking it, you're going to use the inverse operation. So we're going to say, use... The inverse, and I'm not going to make you write the word operation, we'll just say use the inverse, and multiply what Mackenzie told us, 12 times 8, then divide by 3. Now when you do that, you'll end up with your 96, you're going to divide by 3, and you're going to end up with what answer? 32. The 32. So you know you have all the right numbers if they come out to be the numbers you have been using. Okay? So always remember, if you want to check a problem that you're using for division, you're going to use multiplication to do that. If you're doing multiplication and you want to check, you can also use division. They go hand in hand. I know your multiplication facts though, right? When you have that written, go ahead and turn to the next page. Using the inverse 
multiplying 12 times 8, then dividing by 3. Ooh. All right, here's your new problem. And again, they did not write all that stuff for you. They have the question, and we're going to have to write the answer for there. So it says, there are eight dinner rolls in a package. How many packages will be needed to feed 64 people if each person has two dinner rolls? So as always, we're going to highlight. Tell me the question out loud, please. Needed to feed 64 people if each person has two dinner rolls. This one's being asked just a little bit differently. Can somebody tell me the numbers I'm going to need to use. Tristan? Two dinner rolls per person. What else? 64 people. A total of 64 people. And there are eight dinner rolls in the package that you're using. Okay. So you just highlighted what it is you need to find. So let's put it into a sentence similar to what they did on the other side. So I need to find what? Diane. I need to find the number of people or packages Okay, do I need all of that information or just some of it? So let's just leave out all the numbers and let's tell them what we need to find without any numbers. So I will need to find, she said the number of packages, right Cheyenne? Yes. So the number, I'll let you write it as a symbol, of packages. And what are we getting? Packages of what? Well, a package is, what are we talking about? So we can just say rolls, it's fine. And need it. So, I will need to find a number of packages, and I have packs, and didn't spell packages correctly. Glad I checked over. So, a number of packages of rolls needed. You probably could have put packs of rolls needed, and that would have been fine. I will need to find the number of packages of rolls that are needed. <laughs> so notice when you're putting in there, what do I need to find? We didn't use any of the numbers, did we? Because that's what we're going to do in the next one. Okay? So think about what information I'm going to use. Now you don't have to tell me how you're going to use it. You just need to tell me the information we're going to use. So can I put something up there I need to use? Okay, so eight rolls in a package. That's the first thing it told you, right? Oh, you need to be writing on something. Next one. Can I put this next one together? Yeah. So what do I have? Use the other numbers that are listed here. I've got 64 people, and what are they getting? No. So we're going to say 64 people each getting how many? I'm going to put little things out here so those are two different things. Eight rolls in a package is the first one. 64 people each getting two rolls. <coughs> Okay, for this next one, you're probably going to have to flip back to see how they are telling you they're going to use their information. You could probably think about what we just did if you're going to do that again. So what did they use to show this? I will make what? Uh-huh, a bar model. So you're going to start with, I will make. A bar model and I'm going to say for each step so that's the first part make sure you don't fill up your box because we have more to write <coughs> you got to think about the steps we're going to take in order to do that so what are they 